Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. It's a beautiful song, and it summarizes essentially the Christian faith and the life of a Christian. Two major elements, trust God and obey God, the most foundational elements of being a Christian, and yet they're the two hardest things to do in our day-to-day life. Today, we're talking about trusting and obeying. Tim Keller uses this illustration that he heard one time. And the illustration goes like this. Picture it's leading up to Christmas time. Christmas shopping is crazy. And a father and a son go to a toy store. And, and, and this is not just any toy store. This is like the super toy store. And this, the father takes the son through the front door and the son's getting excited because Christmas is coming. And it's all, look at all these amazing things. And the father takes the son over to this toy and says, what do you think about this one? And because says, oh, this is amazing. This is so cool cool and and the father says do you, do you like do you like this one or this one the color uh, options he's like oh, i prefer that one he's like, oh that's awesome well what about this and he takes him over to another toy on a different aisle and he says what do you think about this and the kid's like wow this is amazing i've never seen anything like this he's like, oh just wait till you see this over here and he takes the kid over to the far aisle and, the, and there's, I don't know, it's RC cars or something like that. He's like, what, what, what this one on the top shelf, what do you think about this? And the kid's like, this is incredible. The coolest thing I've ever seen. And the father kneels down and he says, I brought you here to show you all of these, these amazing things, but I want you to know that you are getting none of them. This is a painful illustration and a painful story because something in each of us dies, but the illustration is, serves a, a greater point. And the point is, we think of God this way. We think of God as this supreme ruler who has access to everything that is good and yet holds it out of reach from us. He says, look at this. Isn't this amazing? And you say, yes, I would love a relationship that. He says, well, too bad. It's out of reach. What about this? Imagine this sense of peace and, and purpose to life and value to the things that you do day to day. He says, oh, that would be amazing. He's like, well, too bad. It's out of reach. But what about this? And, and you can go through this career path or, or future uh, exploration and adventure and sense of fulfillment in life. And he says, these things are all in my hand and I have access to all of these things, but I don't want them for you. We think of God like this. When you think about trusting God, two things come to my mind. The first is trusting whether God has your best interest in mind. And the second is trusting that God is faithful. And these two elements of trust are so foundational to being a follower of Jesus. My question to you is, do you trust God? Or do you think of him as the, like that father who has access to everything and yet holds it to himself? Or do you, do you, do you think of God as, as, as wanting good things, but not, being, not fulfilling that consistency and that trustworthiness to be the same and to be in your corner? Do you trust God? So the first hurdle is trusting God. The second hurdle is obeying Him. We find obedience so, so difficult. And, and the reason why we find obedience so difficult is because we think that we're in charge of our own life. Why are we taking orders from somebody else who doesn't care about me, who doesn't want what's best for me, who isn't going to be there for me in the most difficult times? Why would I do what somebody like somebody who's like that, why would I do what they say? Why would I obey their commands? Let's say you do trust God. Let's say you do think that God has your best interests in mind and that he is faithful and trustworthy. So say you trust God and then you want to obey him. But the hardest part to obedience is being able to do the things that he is expecting of you or asking of you, knowing that those very things that he's calling you to step in obedience to, they're out of reach for you, knowing that you're going to fail. Having the ability or not having the ability to actually be obedient to what God has said is, for me personally, been the hardest thing. Knowing what God asks, knowing that it's good for me, knowing that he has my best interest in mind, and knowing that this is the right thing for me, but feeling like that's out of reach, not because he's holding it back, but because I'm holding myself back. Personally, being obedient feels like this thing that is so, so difficult because he's calling me to be perfect, calling me to be holy, calling me to be uniquely set apart for him. And yet there is this part of me that is just, it just rebels 
every inch, every iota of my being just like pushes back on, on even wanting or trying to do the right thing when I know it's good for me. Obedience is, is hard. The thing I've learned about obedience is that obedience isn't the standard that God expects me to get to. God calls me to be holy, calls me to be pure, calls me to be righteous. But obedience to God's calling doesn't, isn't about matching that. You see, I think the thing about obedience is just that we, we forget that Christ is with us. We forget that the Holy Spirit is with us in that moment, empowering us to do the very things that we are unable to do in and of ourselves. Our self-control, our, 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 our resilience and our courage when we're afraid. The Holy Spirit and, and Christ's life himself lives within us when we're a follower of Jesus. And that provides a strength and an ability that goes beyond what I know I'm able to do. And so, for me, I think obedience comes from reliance on that life, reliance on the Holy Spirit, rather than self-will, self-motivation to get to a level of, 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 of purity in God's sight, in the sight of people around me, so that I can say, yes, I am obedient to God's call in my life. I think the thing about obedience is less about managing to be perfect, and more about relying on Christ's perfection and letting his life change us from the inside out so that when he calls us to do something, he is the one that's doing it through us. That, for me, is what I've discovered obedience to be. I'm, I'm just gonna read through a, a couple of the verses and some of the lyrics from the rest of the song just because I think it's so powerful. It says, Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. And I'm going to jump down a little bit. And tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proven him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm getting goosebumps just reading that. How, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh, how sweet to obey him, to take him at his word, to do what he says, to go where he sends. But to know that that's not something that's out of our reach because we have Christ. We have the Holy Spirit to empower us, to enable us to obey. We're not on our own. He is with us. He is experiencing it alongside us and inside us. So trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you're encouraged and blessed and challenged by what you heard in this time. Uh, I just want to take a moment and, and, sh and give a shout out to those who are supporting me and my family through Patreon. You're going to see their names on the screen right now. These guys are supporting us financially month to month, enabling me to be able to make videos like this. And, and if you want to join as a patron as little as $5 a day, uh, it's $5 a day, $5 a month, I would love to invite you into that space. There's a link in my, in, in the, in the, in the comments in the description below so you can find out where to do that. But I just want to say thank you to those who are supporting me and my family. You are amazing. We love you. We are so grateful for you. And if you would like to join that group of people who are so behind us, then follow the link below. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.